Welcome to a very unique episode of Car Shops and Collections. Gene, uh, master photographer, what are you wearing, buddy? What do you mean? Why are you wearing uh, Why are you wearing a stormtrooper helmet? Well, you told me we're going to see a Star Wars vehicle today, so can I you even see? I'd can you even character. see? I, can I see? Uh huh. I can barely hear. Oh wait, here we are. This is. Can you see what's in front of us right now? This is why you're wearing that because for today we've got ourselves a land speeder, among other vehicles in that garage back there. Let's go find Howard and Walter, the two uh, the two guys behind this incredible build. Let's move along. Check this out. It's an actual land speeder. This thing is nuts. We'll break this down, but we're gonna find Howard and Walter inside. What's going on, Howard? Holy cow. Dude, holy cow, look at these cars Whoa. behind you. How are you, man? Good to see you, buddy. Nice to see you. Walter, good to see you, man. How's it going? Gene, come around, because I think there's more. We'll break down these cars and holy smokes. Look at this back here, you guys. Check this out. This is going to be a unique episode of Car Shops and Collections. Hey guys, welcome to Howard and Walter's Garage. We're here to show you some of our car collection. Today, you got Howard. And Walter. And welcome to our garage. Well guys, thanks for having me out today. I, I first met you, Howard, at a car show about a month ago and, and saw this from afar. And you're, this is a spectacular build. What was, um, what was your thought process going into it? Why build a land speeder? Well, the land speeder is our fourth project, to be honest with you. We started off with the Kia hamster car. Remember the commercial, you can drive this, you can drive that. So we guessed, dressed up as the Kia hamster guys and we drove that for a little while. And then the next year we did a... Uh, the Flintstone. Flintstone's car? Uh -huh. Flintstone car, we did the Flintstone. It was too hard to stop. It was too hard to stop. Yeah. It wore the bottom oh, yeah, of our exactly. feet out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vegas with the heat. Yeah. Wore the calluses off our feet. And then after we were done with that, we decided to do the, the land speeder. And uh, we just sat around, we go camping a lot, and we sit around the campfire and go, what do we want to do this year? To us, we don't build the car so much for ourselves, we actually build it for everybody else. And it's an attention grabber too. Oh, this is the top of the food chain. It really is. Yeah, we normally build the car for one night, Halloween. Uh -huh. That's it. And when Halloween's over, we usually tear the car apart and, and we move on to our next project. Throw it away. That's it? We destroy it. Okay, did you build this one this year? No, this car we actually built in 2017. Yeah, because you're, not gonna, you're not gonna destroy a land speeder in something, uh, you know, this quality of a build. What, what is it, what is this thing built on? How did you start, what's the foundation? This is a 2015 Razor 1000 four-seater. Um, I think we got it with what, 1200 miles on it? Yeah, it had about 1200 miles on it. Okay. And right now it's sitting at about 4,800 miles as the land speeder. Um, we've done a couple of videos for the police department, some mm -hmm. PSA announcements. Yes. Don't drink and drive, uh -huh. texting and driving. And we've had fun with that. Um, more than anything else, the enjoyment for everybody else. We share, you know, we share this with Make-A-Wish mm -hmm. and other charity, charitable products. And you guys products. are tied into actually granting wishes. You do, you do a lot here for the Las Vegas community with this because Star Wars has a huge following. Now, Gene is a huge Star Wars fan. There's so many Star Wars fans watching. May the 4th is coming up here in a little bit. If it, as far as like details of the land speeder itself, like these little, little fake dings and dents and scrapes, is that what it looks like in the movie? Yeah. It, yeah. We basically took a uh, picture uh -huh. and printed a copy and put it in the garage when we built it. And it was basically six weekends it took us to build it because we both work full time. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much every weekend we were on it and... And here it is. Yeah. Gene, come around the front. So this here, the Star Wars, the, the experts see this, they know this is actually in the land speeder, this dent right here. That, that is correct. In the original land speeder, that, that... That hit an asteroid and damaged the front of the land speeder. So when we were building it, it was perfect front end, mm -hmm. and we were just like, no, it needs something. And that's when I decided to kind of cave the front end in and make it look like it actually hit the asteroid. Okay, so the side here then, where, where are you getting this part, the jet? It's a jet, right? Those, yep, three jet engines. And you'll actually see now with the light on, there's actually a light in front. And oh, dude, that's awesome. And then there's red lights on the back You're side. You're kidding me. I, I saw this because actually, it was last week and I'm driving through downtown Las Vegas and I'm, I'm at a stoplight and a land speeder passes me. I mean, there's only one land speeder in town yeah. and I see Howard woo, cruising up West Charleston. We were at a car show last weekend for UMC Hospital. So we had the car out for that event. And sometimes we drive it there, sometimes we'll trailer it there. Yeah. The, the fun is driving it Yeah, there. I mean, it's so funny because I saw you pass in every single car, everyone's turning, getting there. I even took a picture. I'm like, yeah. I know I'm gonna see you, but I'm still taking pictures as you're driving by. Yeah, 
So on board, underneath this jet engine, uh -huh. there's an actual DJ fog machine on board. So as you saw on Saturday, it blows smoke out here. Yes. So at nighttime, with the red illuminating in there and the smoke coming out, it actually looks like it's on fire coming out of there. So we had to put a, a generator on to run the fog machine. Mm -hmm. We spent uh, just a, a, an amazing amount of time trying to get all this stuff to function correctly. We've never done anything like this, yes. okay? And um, so it's, it's, for us, even right now, I mean, I have a, a glow of me just because it's, the excitement's still here. It really here. is. From it's, day one to, you know, five years later, it's still fun. When I saw you at the, at the car show last month, I'm walking through and there's, I mean, beauties, beauties, beauties. And I see this and I, I immediately took a picture and sent it to Gene. I'm like, I found our next episode. And right. and that's when you and I connected. The inside of it, this is, this is what it looks like, the actual land speeder from the, from the show. From the Sim show from simulated, the we're, yeah. we're close on that. You know, we, we hodgepodge junkyard our stuff, uh -huh. you know, and we had friends that was a truck driver. So those are air seats, you know, valves for an air seat out of a semi truck. And then, you know, we just, threw some other stuff on there so it wasn't a plane dash. Because the actual land speeder in Star Wars was built on a Bond bug, which is a three-wheeled European car. That is correct. That, was built on. that is correct. The first original one had a forklift behind it, a green screen, two rods going through it, and they drove it with a forklift. That was the original one. And then they built the one that they used in the movie. And this one here, we actually have mirrors to go down where the skirt is. Uh -huh and they sit at a 15 degree angle so they reflect the soil it's on. So it actually like it's hovering. It looks like it's hovering. So it's a ghost underneath of it. Oh, but gosh. the problem is with the mirrors, you can't drive it down the highway or, sure. or anywhere else. Just, you know, they, they were, and they're hard to get on. This is, and it's all fabricated by you two guys did all this. Yep, all of it. That's a, that's a talent. Dodge Venom, 1,000 horsepower at the rear wheels. How did you get this? Uh, a friend of mine bought it brand new in 2005. Uh -huh. He drove it for a little while and parked it in his garage and has sat in his garage for about 14 years, not moving. He just lost interest in it. The car is super uncontrollable. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, 05, we didn't have traction control. We didn't have all the modern convenience of keeping it under control. Um, it, this has top speed of 255 miles per hour. That is correct, 255. That's insanity. Well, here's the thing. I drove it the first time and I, I studied up on it. So from zero to 60 mile an hour, it gives you four pounds of boost. It's twin turbo. Uh -huh. From 60 to 100, it gives you nine pounds of boost. As soon as you hit 100, it gives you the full 14 pounds of boost. And here's what you need to do at 100 mile an hour. Make sure you're in the center of two lanes because you have no idea where you're going. The car is just insane. And that's with brand new tires on the car. Now, under 30 of these were made, correct? There was only 24 made. Only 24, and then what, how many were convertibles? I, that I, I couldn't Maybe six answer. six or seven? So you have yeah. one of 24 made, one of those, uh, six of those 24 are convertibles. Okay. So one of six, one of 24. This is incredible. Right. Two, and Hennessy, I mean, they're the builders behind it. That is correct. So the base price on this car was about sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars in 05. Uh -huh. This car was two hundred twenty-five thousand from Hennessy. <laughs> but it is just—it's it, it, mind blowing to think there's a thousand horsepower in a Dodge Viper a at your disposal, and at five hundred it was uncontrollable. Yeah. Now you've doubled and then your five hundred. Go to a thousand. Yeah. The Dodge, just even to the Viper itself is such, I mean, it's a cool car. It's a cool car to have in your collection. But then to have this with that little, little extra power, it makes it even more special. Do you know what the color it is? Black? Black. Black. All right, we're gonna do a cold start. It's a V10, so it never purrs like a V8. Okay. It always has a rumble. Yeah. Kind of like a Subaru. Uh -huh. The WXR always yeah. sounds like it's missing on a cylinder. This until you get up to RPM, then it comes alive. Was this now interior-wise? This dash is it? Is that original? I, I don't know, know if that. that is. I don't know. It came with that. Yeah. I, you know, that'd be the first thing I change out. Yeah, it pops out of the yeah. dash and covers the. Yeah, air it covers everything. Yeah. How long have you guys been collecting cars? Where did this passion start? Uh, 
Well, in all honesty, two Cobra years here. ago. Mm -hmm. Two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago, this garage was empty? Empty. So I, I saw this at a car show and kept talking to the guy. He had just finished the car. Yeah. He told me what it was worth. I go, I'll buy it. He goes, it's not for sale. Six weeks later, I owned it. It's in your garage? It's okay. in my garage. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, not a bad, not a Cobra, not, not a bad car to start with. It's a beautiful car. The guy that built it did an amazing job. It's a super performance, so it's the top of the food chain other than the, the original cars. Woo! Doesn't need more horsepower. Right. This car does not need more. The Cuda, how long have you had this? The Cuda I've had about one year now. The lemon twist, the color, that yellow. That is correct. I mean, this is a really cool color. But we had so many cool colors back in the day. And they name them all. Yeah, uh-huh. Like the, the Challenger in front of it's a cinnamon stick. Yeah. You know? Excuse it. And this is a real Cuda? This is a real Cuda, all matching numbers. And the, I can't see the, because the, the, VIN, the VIN will have the BS on it. It's original shaker, everything. Wow. The gentleman I bought it of built the car from the ground up. I got the car with nine miles on it. After the restoration? After the restoration. Okay. He sent all the gauges back in to have them completely reset, recalibrated. And uh, he did a rotisserie build on this car. 70, his, uh, 72, right? 72. 72, I like the front end too, because in 71 he had the four lights and kind of like that, that Barracuda teeth going across the grill. 72, we go to the, just the two lights and then kind of just the, the nose right there. Also too, what I like about this is the yellow all the way over. Yep. So you get the vinyl top, which is cool, but is that gonna stand the test of time? It will not, Yeah. it will not. This is nice. You can, open. can I open it? Yeah, yeah of course. Thank you. Wow. So you a Mopar guy? I can't figure you out. I, I have no preference uh -huh. to any car. And no kidding, I'm not a car guy like, like, oh, I gotta have this one in my collection or whatever. I'm the guy going, dude, that car looks good. I yes. think I'm gonna get it, yes. okay? That's why you're the perfect fit for the show. Yeah. That's why at seven o'clock in the morning, I get a text message from him. He's looking at buying a fire truck. Or a week later, it's a <laughs> ice cream truck that's got a blown big block and a parachute on the back. So this is how this is all original inside here. The whole 100% original. Outside of the, the radio upgrade, but yeah, that looks great too. Gauges are in great condition. There's your heat over there. Two hundred oh, twenty six or two hundred sixty seven. I can't see. Two hundred sixty seven. Seven miles on it. Yeah, I drove it to a couple of car shows. Working clock as well? Everything worked. Original working clock? Dude, yeah. that's awesome. It's actually really fun to drive too. I'm sure it is. Original stick, four speed pistol grip. So right here, this is, if you ever doubt, because you know people can change the Barracuda, build it to look like a Cuda, but you look at the VIN, BS right there, that's how you know it's a Cuda. Right there, BS, boom. Not that I wasn't doubting you, but it just anytime someone says they have a CUDA, that's the first thing they like to go to, is to see that it's BS, to know that it's truly 100% the real deal. BS, right there. Look at the things I learned see? today. See, it's an there? educational show. I thought I knew everything. I just want you to know you didn't get ripped off. What that's you paid for, you actually got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready for the startup? Howard? That's cool, the gauges light up. It's, yeah, you're, you're dialed in there, man. They come from the dash down. If you look at the gauges when I turn them down, they have an illuminating light on the top that, that lights down on them. The reverse light comes on over here when you put it in reverse. This one's equally as impressive. I'm sure. Shaky. That's cool. This is a Howard incredible collection inside your garage. We could spend hours, real fast, hours on all your vehicles. When did you get it? Uh, that one's about 14 months old now. 14 months old? A couple of months before I got this. How often do you drive the GT? 
I drive every car at least once a month. Do you? All of them. Just so they lube them up, keep them going. Yeah, Gene, you can't fit in this. But Gene, you can fit in the back of the land speeder. Can we go yeah, for a ride? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Before we go for our test drive in the land speeder, Howard, you want to start it up? Let's see what we got let's here. See what we got. Sounds good. This is so neat, man. The neighbors must love you, huh? All right, we're headed to another galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. We're having fun filming for you. So enjoy the ride. Here we go. This is a, this is a thrill, man. How, how fast? And we're not going to go fast. We have Gene on the hood of our land speeder. Top, top, top speed. Top speed's about 70 mile an hour. 70 miles. Have you hit 70 in your land speeder? Nah, I try not to. It's, yeah. it's more about the show it than is. the go. It is. I mean, I think everyone growing up that was into Star Wars had the land speeder toy. I had one growing up. It, it's kind of one of those things with to be riding one now as an adult. Well, it's, it's, it's a trip. Obviously, we haven't torn this car apart yet. Yes, yeah, right. so this is the keeper. We, we had a chance to sell it uh, last year, and uh, Walter, Walter made the best point. I mean, we could have profited from it. You know, we're not driven by money, and we would have built another one. The reason why we didn't sell it, Walter back here, common sense goes, you really want another one out there? Yeah. Good point. Yeah, good point. Good point. Well, you guys, thank you so much. This was uh, from the Land Speeder to the Cuda to the Venom and everything in between. This was a really, really cool special episode. Thank you so much. Ejector hood for Gene? Or? Yeah. <laughs> thank thanks you. For, thanks for having us. Thank you. It's been it. a blast. This has been fun. This has been a lot of fun. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. That's cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections. Mm -hmm.